Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Hello? Hello? Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Welcome back. It's me again. And unfortunately for you, if you don't want to see me, I'm going to be back. No, wait. This is the last one of the day. This is the last one of the day. Welcome, Andrew Ritter. Yeah, so I, uh, because, <laughs> let's get cracking here. So, because of uh, vacation last week, because of going to New York City yesterday to see Live with Kelly and Ryan, and uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, because of that, hey, Joel, how are you, buddy? Because of that, I uh, am a little bit behind on... Uh, actually, this is not really behind. But I just had to live stream, or I just had to record this week's... what I Actually, last week's What I Learned episode. So I'm a little bit behind on that recording, releasing it on a Tuesday. But whatever, you know? Whatever. I'll say the same thing I said before. My, my, my thing that I set is AM Excellence Monday through Friday. Interview on Thursday. Boom. Now... With AMX Kids on Tuesday, what I learned, there's a little bit of fluctuation depending on my life. And as my life gets more busy, and that's something Dredd had said, Spanny, when you start speaking more and you start traveling more, you're not going to be able to do all the things that you once did. So we'll deal with all that stuff. What's this? We'll deal with all that stuff, um, you know, when we, when we deal with that. But... That uh, just a little bit of background um, as to why I, I'm, I'm live streaming three times today. AMX this morning just did the live stream of this week's What I Learned episode, which is now on the podcast. And now I'm also live streaming this AMX Kids 2. So why are we even, why is there AMX Kids 2? Because it's always been important to me. I was very fortunate to have positive influences in my life when I was growing up, uh, when you know, I was just really goal-oriented, really wanted to get straight A's and win a state title, and that's really all I focused on. And it's hard to stay that path, especially when you're a young kid. It's absolutely, you know, there's so many influences coming from all angles. You get exposed to all the stuff in the world. So I just want to put a resource out there that can help a kid do the right thing when they're teetering on what should I do? Should I go this way or should I go that way? Hopefully something they hear in Amex Kids will help them go the right way instead of the wrong way. And uh, my love of learning, I'm using books, I'm using reading, the extremely valuable habit of reading, the lifelong learning mentality as the platform to start this discussion. So please, if you're watching this, consider sharing this video, consider telling your friend, hey, this vineyard has this new kid series, kids series out on his podcast feed. If you're a coach, uh, share it with your kids use it as a platform for a discussion Andrew have your son listen to it mm -hmm. uh, if you're also listening person whom I don't know is listening and you have a son or a daughter have them listen to it start conversation that's the whole that's the that's the mission my friends and I freaking love reading so it just gives me more of an excuse to read and eventually we're going to start making money from reading so I can just read all day and I can travel to fun places I'm coming back from Stone Harbor. So if you were able to watch the um, AMX episodes from last week, holy moly, was that freaking awesome. The, the light from the morning. Come on now. Come on now. Seriously. 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 Do you see it? Seriously. It was freaking amazing. It was like, I felt like I was in Santorini, Greece, because it was so stinking blue and pristine. Eric Albright, welcome, my friend. So yeah, so I got, I'm so excited, I got myself, well, I didn't just buy it, but I had it sitting, waiting to be used, a new AMX Kids notebook, oh yeah, journal. So all the lesson plans for AMX Kids will be kept within. This is how... Um, obsessive I am. So the first AM Excellence episode, I, I was I didn't use this. I used a legal pad. I uh Oh yeah, Joel, oh, yeah. Pencil Tucky, you know it, buddy. Can't take me out of there, buddy. I am central PA through and through. My wife calls it a 
of Central. Actually, she calls it out west. She refers to Haldisburg as out west. I'm now in Harrisburg. Hey, Brian, how are you, buddy? Hey, Camry Martial Arts. Ooh, 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 ooh. CMA, good stuff, Brian. But my wife refers to where I'm from as out west because she thinks she's from the east, from Harrisburg. We're so fancy in Harrisburg. But uh, yeah, if you listen to me speak often, you, there is certainly some central PA that comes out in there. But anyhow, so the first, the first AMX kids, and I'll start recording here soon, but the first AMX kids, ah, my neck is incredibly stiff, was recorded, well, was written, the lesson plan was recorded in a legal pad. And it was three pages, not like full, but three good pages of uh, notes. So I went through... <laughs> And wrote them. I copied them to have them all in this uh, journal. In that, my wrist. Like I said, I went on vacation last week. I took a trip into New York City yesterday to see the the uh, recording of Live with Kelly and Ryan, which was awesome. And so I, I've had to do a lot of reading, processing, lesson planning, recording the last two days. Uh, the last since I got home last night. So it's been a lot. But anyhow, so I'm going to dive into AMX Kids. I don't even know. I think last week's episode was about 30 minutes. Uh, I'm thinking this would be 20, 25 minutes. I really don't know. We're going to kind of let it buff itself out. But the whole point of it is to read kids' books. Um, so when I hit record and I hit play, I'm speaking to kids. So keep in mind. I don't think there are many young people. I don't think there are many middle schoolers watching right now. Doesn't seem to be my prime demo. But uh, I'm going to be talking about the book. Hatchet, Extracting Life Lessons. A lot of learning. A lot of learning. A lot of energy. And I'm not going to lie. I am tired. But I'm not going to lie further. It don't matter. Because we got to perform. We got to do this. That guy right there. He was ready. This guy right here, he's going to be ready. Happy early 4th of July to everybody. I'm going home. Home to Altoona, to Pennsylvania, to Haldisburg. To Haldisburg is my home, not Altoona, Haldisburg. I'm going to run a race, a nine-mile race. Very much looking forward to that. And we're going to have a 4th of July-themed AM Excellence tomorrow morning. So how many of you... How many of you are going to wake up tomorrow morning on the 4th of July to watch AM Excellence 518 at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time on this Facebook page? How many? Can I get a hoo-hoo? Andrew? Joel? Hmm? Hmm? Are we? Hmm? Probably not, but I won't hold it against you. Whew. All right, Spanny, let's get rocking and rolling. Pumping myself up. Pumping myself up. Pumping, my, pumping myself up. Pumping myself. Good morning. Good morning. Is it Keiston? 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 Welcome either way. Oh, last time I, I recorded a little bit ago and the, the live stream cut out. And because I was recording, I didn't want to stop and start again. So if it cuts out, I, I'm sorry. I'll try to on the fly keep it going but i do want to stay true to this podcast episode so we'll, we'll figure it out hopefully it won't cut out don't cut out internet you hear okay all right one two three hello all you world's toughest little learners out there listen we're back for am excellence kids to reading the book hatchet by gary paulson why why are we even here why are you here it's summertime why are you out playing well hopefully you already did play hopefully you already did have some fun maybe you did have some screen time too but let's not forget why we read why do you read why do you learn because learning gets you what you want i realize i'm asking you a lot of questions i'm throwing a lot of things at you you don't have to retain everything but just retain the overall message that reading is important Learning is important. By committing yourself to lifelong learning, you're setting yourself apart from the pack. One thing I've learned over the course of my lifetime is that asking questions, reading books, learning, looking at, at successes and failures from a learning a learner's perspective is extremely valuable. And if you didn't tune in last week, this is the second episode of AMX Kids. If you haven't tuned in, last week's episode was the first AMX Kids, and we are reading the book Hatchet by Gary Paulson because this is a story. 
So if you haven't already listened to last week's episode, go back and listen to it and then listen to this episode because they build upon one another. So last week we learned about Brian. Brian was traveling up north to Canada. He was in a single plane and the plane had crashed in the woods in the wilderness and he's alone. You know, you and I have problems. Everyone has problems. That, that, that uh, a reality of life is that we have problems. But Brian is in the Canadian wilderness alone with very little but a hatchet. So this is a story of survival. This is a story of discovery. This is a story of accountability and responsibility. This is a story of doing, taking action, making things happen. Because Brian's alone. And if he sat there alone and didn't do anything, guess what? Nothing good would happen. Only bad things would happen. So let's talk a little bit about needs. So I'm going to throw some some principles at you. I don't expect you to remember everything, but I, I would like you to just relax and listen. Don't, don't worry. This is an audio recording. So you can go back and listen. You can hit pause. You can take notes if you want to. But for now, for the next 20 minutes or so, just listen, right? Relax and listen. Don't stress yourself out about retaining everything. The, the, the good things will stick. <laughs> the good things will stick, right? You know, I read a lot of books and I take a lot of notes and I'm obsessed with learning and writing everything down. But at the end of the day, you know, if you read a thousand books in your lifetime, guess what's going to stick? The things that resonate with you most, most. So as one of the world's toughest little learners, guess what's going to stick? The things that mean the most to you. So for now, don't worry about taking notes. Just for now, sit back, listen, and enjoy the show. First thing I want to dive into dealing with this book, I broke it down into four parts. This is episode number two. There's going to be a three and a four. So if you're following along, if you're actually reading the book as I'm teaching it, next week's episode three comes out. I'm approximately going 50 pages at a time. So by next week, you'll, we will have wanted to read from approximately pages 100 to 150. So let's talk a little bit about needs. So when Brian's out in the wilderness, there's shelter. He needs shelter. So what's a need? A need versus a want. You know, a need versus a want. I'm thinking back, I'm reflecting, and it's talking about Brian, and he needs shelter, he needs a house, it's survival. You know, we're fortunate in that most of us, the majority of us who are listening to this, we're not actually fighting for survival, we're fighting for things that we want in life. A need versus a want. A need is something you absolutely cannot do without, and a want is like an extra. It's like a maybe a privilege, or a bonus, or a treat, or, or a gift. It's, it's a need versus a want. I started thinking about wrestling. You know, I grew up a wrestler, and, and when I was in middle school, when I was your age, approximately, give or take, actually for my entire life, but wrestling was the focus of my life. And wrestling taught me a lot about this idea of needs versus want. In the book Hatchet, Brian's need is shelter. Brian's need is water. Brian's need is food. Brian's need is fire. Brian's need is survival or rescue. Those are his needs. I thought back to wrestling, and, and, and wrestling taught me a lot about needs versus want. You know, I want a pepperoni pizza. I want potato chips. I want all these things. But what do I truly need, right? When, when you're cutting weight for wrestling, and if there's any wrestlers out there, you absolutely know what I'm talking about. Cutting weight over the years has gotten more and more healthy, but it's, it's an act of self-discipline. And when you're training for wrestling, and when you're sacrificing all the goodies that your friends are eating, you would never imagine how valuable H2O is. Now, I'm not a scientific genius here. I am not a master of the periodic table of elements, but I do know that H2O is water. When you're wrestling, when you're sacrificing, when you're disciplined, when you have to make, make a certain weight, water is gold. And what, what, why am I even telling you this? What picture is this painting? It's that idea versus, of needs versus wants. I want maybe a soda. I want maybe an orange juice. I want maybe an iced tea. But when you're down and out, Brian's down and out in the wilderness, when you're down and out training to, to, to reach a specific goal or to win a match or a title or a state championship, it gets, about, it gets down to the needs. Water is the needs. That's why I love training hard so much. I don't know if you train. Maybe you train. Maybe you're involved in a sport. Maybe you exercise for fun. Maybe you don't do anything. But the reason that I love training so hard and so much is because it strips down all the clutter. It gets me to my needs as a human being, my needs as a person. The harder I train, the less I think of all the frills on the outside, the less I think of all the treats and the gadgets, and the more I think about what do I need to survive? Who am I as a person? Who is the Spaniard? Moving on, catch, catching on with that theme of... of uh, food and nutrition deprivation as a wrestler, right? And that's something you got to be extremely careful with. 
But Brian's out in the wilderness. And Brian, he doesn't have these, these amenities that he always used to have. And there's a quote in the book that says this. He, Brian, was so used to having food just be there. Just always being there. So my message to you is be careful taking things for granted. Be careful of always getting used to things just being there. Be careful for, for taking things for granted and just expecting them to be there. Because guess what? They're not always going to be there. And I wanted to pick out a, a vocab word here, gratitude. So maybe you've heard of gratitude. Maybe you've heard of the word grateful. You know, grateful, what I believe is the adjectorial form of the word gratitude. Gratitude being the noun. And gratitude means this, the quality of being thankful, a strong feeling of appreciation. And you don't, have to, you don't have to have so much. You don't have to have all the gadgets. You don't have to have the new iPhone. You don't have to have the, the new computer. You don't have to have, oh, what? I don't even know what examples to say here. <laughs> to say here. <laughs> because I'm 37 and you're not 37. So I'm not hip to all the gadgets. I do have kids, but they're too young to have all the gadgets. But be thankful. Look for the good in the simple things that you have. Don't take things for granted. Because you know what? Just like Brian, who was putting this, this situation out in the wilderness, we never know when we're going to continue to have the things that we have or not. So my rule of thumb is, hey, let's try to be thankful. Let's try to look for the good in the things that we have, and we're going to find it. This, this thing called the law of attraction, there's a little bit of advanced thinking here, but the law of attraction says that what you think about, you bring about. So if you're thankful, if you're grateful, you're going to bring about more thankful and grateful, uh, more things to which you can be thankful and grateful. Look for the good and you'll find it. There's a universal principle, and, and I'm not going to extrapolate on this too much, but there's a universal principle that Brian uh, maintains when he's out in the wilderness. And there's a quote from the book that says, simple, keep it simple, simple, keep it simple. So if you think of all your goals and aspirations, if you think of where you want to go in your life, if you think of all the possibilities, it can get overwhelming. Google, the internet, there are questions and answers and choices and uh, paths that you can take. And when, you're, when you, you go into high school, there's different things, you, paths, career paths you can take in high school and then college, what college? Oh, what am I gonna study? Uh, first of all, relax, right? Relax, because it'll all buff out. Second of all, remember this idea, simple, keep it simple. Brian is speaking specifically about survival out in the wilderness. Most of us will never have to deal with that. But simplicity is one of my values. It's one of my key values. I learned a saying when I was a kid, and I, 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 it's called KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Truthfully, I don't know what the stupid means, so I just say keep it simple. K-I-S, keep it simple. Everything that I do, whether it's sports, whether it's training, whether it's reading books, whether it's producing this podcast episode, whether it's speaking in front of a school or a group of people, I always keep it simple. There's this thing out there called paralysis by analysis. Paralysis by analysis is when you take in too much and you think too much of all the different possibilities that you just don't do anything because you're analyzing, you're, you're considering every single thing. So keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not saying that's the way you should be, but consider that. Consider keeping it simple. We're going to dive into a topic here that's extremely important. And it's something that, that I deal with as a 37-year-old former professional fighter, former uh, uh, current speaker, former reality TV uh, champion, former Division One college wrestler. This is something I deal with. And I say that uh, to, to, to let you know that, hey, it's something that we all deal with. So on being bruised and alone and swollen and bloody, Brian's in a bad spot. He's out there in the wilderness in a terrible spot. He said in the book, it says this, quote, he was at that moment almost overcome with self-pity. He was at that moment almost overcome by self-pity. So there's this word self-pity. And I went, to, I went to Google. I do this a lot. And I encourage you to do this too. If there's a word or a phrase or a concept that you're not completely clear about, just go to Google and I typed self-pity definition. Uh, courage definition. Bravery definition. Because it really helps to add context and depth to these words that we say and we use so often. So on being in this terrible situation, Brian was almost overcome with self-pity. So I went to the dictionary. I went to the dictionary. <laughs> you don't even know what a dictionary is. I went to Google. I went to Google and this is what it said. Self-pity is excessive, self-absorbed unhappiness over 
over one's own trouble. So excessive self-absorbed unhappiness over one's own troubles. More or less, it is feeling bad for your own problems. So Brian was looking at this terrible situation. He was alone in the wilderness. He was bruised and he was cut and the mosquitoes were terrible. He didn't have food. He didn't have fire. He was lonely. He didn't know if he was going to survive. And he was overcome at that moment almost by self-pity. And the self-pity is feeling bad for your own problems. So understand this. Negativity is a downer. Negativity is a poison. Negativity is a virus. Self-pity is a form of negativity. Now, I don't expect you, nor do I, 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 I can't do it, so certainly I can't expect you to never feel negative. And I'm speaking right now as if I'm speaking to my son and daughter who are probably too young to really understand and learn from this now, but one day they'll be listening to it. Negativity is there. It's there in the world. It's going to be in your, it's going to be in your mind. Listen to this. We have, I heard this stat not too long ago, we have 50,000 conversations with ourselves every day. And guess how many of them are negative? Guess. If you're listening with your friend or your parent, hit pause and converse about it. I'm going to give you the answer in three, two, one, go. If we have 50,000 conversations with ourselves, 40,000 are negative. 40,000 of them are negative. So it's okay. If you're negative, it's okay if you have negative thoughts, but you and I want to fight that negativity. And remember the law of attraction that I spoke about a little bit ago, what you think about, you bring about when you feel that negative thought, when you hear that negative thought, when you think about that negative thought, hit pause, think about a positive thought that you can do. You might not necessarily be able to say, stop thinking negatively, but you can transition that negative thought into a positive thought. The law of attraction, what you think about, you bring about. This next one, this next one's a sensitive topic. A sensitive topic that I want you to know. Old Spanny, old Spanny, UFC fighter, trainer, tough guy, push-up guy. I cry all the time. I cry often. I cry a lot. My father cries. I think I got the gene from him, but I cry a lot. And Brian, at one point when he's out in the wilderness, he lets it all out. He lets it all out because he just feels so dejected. And this, again, he, he's letting, he's feeling that self-pity. He, he lets it out of him. But the important thing is this. The important thing is this. He feels self-pity. He lets it out. He cries. Nothing wrong with crying. I cry for a variety of reasons on a regular basis. But then he takes action. He takes action after that self-pity. He takes action after feeling bad, after getting it all out of him. What you don't want to do is feel that self-pity, cry, and then not do anything to make the situation better. Last week's episode, if you've listened to it, you remember me saying, referencing my brother who, who, who uses this with his daughter, who's only four and a half years old as well. He'll say, what's the problem? How do you solve it? That's the deal. You're going to run into to, to blips in the radar. You're going to run into tough spots. So process it. Understand, hey, this is a part of life. These challenges, that's a part of life. I'm going to feel bad about it, and then I'm going to do something to change it. Make sure you remember that. Take action. Write that down. Take action. The <laughs> next thing I want to talk about is this. And this made me smile and this made me laugh. So I, I prior to becoming a UFC fighter, if you, if you don't know, I used to be a teacher. That's why I really enjoy doing these episodes, speaking to youth, speaking to middle schoolers and high schoolers and even elementary students if they're listening. I used to be a teacher. I, I taught junior and senior high Spanish. And I read in the book in Hatchet, so Brian encounters a bear, a bear. I don't know about you, but I am, um, I'm going to say it, scared of bears. I'm scared of snakes. I'm scared of, of critters. I just went to the beach last week, Stone Harbor, New Jersey, and I am proud of the fact that I'm getting less and less, um, less and less uh, uh, scaredy catted, scaredy cat. I'm less and less of a scaredy cat of the critters in the ocean. So I am, <laughs> my bravery and my honor is, is improving in that area. But Brian was talking about his encounter with a bear. And it made me think of when I traveled to Guatemala. And this is just kind of a, I don't know, a neat little story. I don't know that there's, there's much of a, a learning point to it, but a neat story. I remember I went to Guatemala to learn Spanish. And Guatemala is a Spanish-speaking country. And I, it, I was in the jungle in Guatemala. And this is like the real jungle. Not like a kind of jungle, but like a real jungle. And there were these howler monkeys. Now, a howler monkey is not very big. It's 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 not a, a it's 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 small, it's relatively small. But they were way high up in these trees. I couldn't even see them. And they let out this howl. 
that was so stinking intense that I I I I I, I don't remember. It was a long time ago, but I probably like shook in my boots. I probably fell over. I probably bent and, and like looked up and thought, oh my gosh, where's this ginormous silverback gorilla at? Because it's coming at me. No, it was like a little howler monkey. But Brian talks about his experience with the bear. And he talks about, he says this, quote, it is something to understand, he thought, not something to run away from. So he's kind of coming to grips with with being around this bear in the wilderness and understanding that, oh, he didn't, in this particular instance, he had an interaction with it. And, and he, he, he realized that it was understanding the bear that was the key here. And the message I want to pass on to you is this idea of understanding. Things that you're afraid of, a lot of times it's because you just don't understand it. With fighting, I was afraid of fighting. And then I learned how to fight as a professional fighter and I became less scared of it. I understand, I, I, I learned the, the, the technique and the skills and the value in preparation. So understand, commit to lifelong learning and that fear is often simply just not knowing, just not understanding. So consume and learn as much as you possibly can. I wanna throw this at you, it's an acronym, an acronym. And an acronym, I believe I'm saying it correctly, my sister is an English teacher. And so she actually teaches books like this. She's a high school English teacher, so maybe not this exact book. But I texted her the other day and I said, Nick, I'm, I'm reading these books and I'm remembering all these gr grammar terms and, and literary terms like foreshadowing and metaphors and analogies. And uh, it, it, I'm taking these notes. So acronym, I believe, is the correct uh, mm, the correct word here but an acronym i believe or whatever it is or whatever it is that i'm trying to explain is letters that form a word that stand for other words so i'm going to give you this acronym so when brian learned when brian was learning about the bear when he had his experience with the bear he he said quote for the first time since the crash it said for the first time since the crash he was not thinking of himself so that made me think of this acronym that i want you to write down as well stay stay Stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about yourself. And this plays into the idea, and I, and I wrote this vocab word down, this idea of being selfless or selflessness. And selflessness is being concerned with the needs and wishes of other people. There's this universal rule that I read about often, and I read hundreds and hundreds of books, and I study, and I take notes, and I listen to a bunch of interviews and podcast episodes. But there's this universal rule that says you must give to get. You must give to get. That nature doesn't favor something from nothing. When you're older, you should read a book called Think and Grow Rich. But this idea that, that you should give, right? In the spirit of giving. You shouldn't give only to get. But you should give because giving is the right thing. And then follow that with this universal law that in order to get, you must give. So Brian realized that he was thinking about the bear for the first time. Remember that acronym. Stay. Stop thinking about yourself. Start thinking about other people. What acronym is that? What acronym is start thinking about other people? If you know it, uh, shoot me a, a, a note, tag me on social media at Charlie Spaniard. Tell me what start thinking about other people, what that, <laughs> what that acronym is. All right, moving on. I want to talk a little bit about this idea of respect. 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 My daughter is four and a half. My son is one and a half. One of the Themes that I repeat to them most often is respect. I'll say, Gracie June, respect your mother. Gracie June, respect your toys. Gracie June, respect the environment. Gracie June, respect whatever I'm talking about is respect. Make respect wherever you're at in your life, you know, whatever, whatever things you do in your life, make respect one of your primary drivers. And I, again, I went, to, I went to the dictionary, and the, the way respect comes up in this book is, Brian, there's an incident that happens, and he throws his hatchet. He throws his hatchet, and the next day he finds it, and there's a chip in it. And that got me thinking about things that I own, you know, things that my daughter owns, things that I've owned in, in life. And as a, as a youngster, maybe I would uh, treat things a certain way, and my dad would, would drive this idea of respect in me and think, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something. A feeling of deep admiration for someone or something. It's a way of treating or thinking about someone or something. So it's a deep admiration for something or someone. Now, it doesn't have to be like a movie star. It doesn't have to be a rock star. Or it doesn't have to be a star athlete that you show deep or admiration for. But what about little things? You know, little things. Respect your mother. Respect your father. Respect your teachers. Respect nature. 
Don't throw trash around. Pick up trash. Put it in a garbage can. Respect cars. Respect your, your gadgets. Respect your iPad. Respect your, your cell phone. Respect those things. Treat them with admiration. It brings me to another word, which is honor. I just read a book on the Native Americans, the history of the Native Americans, which I want to say, when I was in middle school, I was not into history. But as a 37-year-old head, I am way into history. And in that book, Native Americans, they talked about honor and they talked about respect and they talked about courage and bravery. Honor is simply high respect. So honor the things around you. Show high respect. How, how, do, you, how do you show respect? If I say show respect, what do you do, right? How can you show respect? What are some things you can do to show respect? Why don't I tell you? Say please. Say thank you. How about you keep things clean and orderly? Your room, your gadgets. Hmm? How about that? How about we uh, pay attention? Pay attention to our mom and our dad when they're talking to us. Pay attention to our teachers. Pay attention to our siblings. Pay attention to your friends. That's a way of showing respect too. It's so easy to look down at your phone. And trust me, I have a phone too. And I can spend too much time on my phone. So I'm very aware of this idea. But simply looking someone in the eyes, talking to them, listening, processing what they're saying, those are all signs of respect. So if you're thinking to yourself or you really want to buy into this idea of, of incorporating respect into your life more, those are some very simple ways, simple things you can do it. And the last point I'm going to talk about has to do with starting a fire. Starting a fire. So Brian understood, quote, Brian found it was a long way from sparks to fire. So literally, literally, because it's written in a book, Brian is trying to start a fire. And he learns that, hmm, starting a fire is very hard. And he goes through multiple processes of trying to start this fire. And it, it, it says, quote, Brian found out it was a long way from sparks to fire. So what does that mean it was a long way from sparks to fire? That means that the idea of starting a fire and then being able to cr create a spark is a long way from actually having a fire that's keeping you warm. There's a lot of work that's got to go into it. And this brought out a very, very valuable learning principle for you to jot down or, or remember. Play the long game. Right there. Play the long game. Put in your work now for the reward later. Brian had to put in work to continuously make these sparks, get different combustible materials that could keep this fire lit, uh, uh, understand and learn the key to starting that fire, which he does on his own by trial and error. But play the long game. There's a self-satisfaction. So self-satisfaction, there's a feel-goodness in your belly that comes when you work hard for something. It just feels better. So if, you're, if, if, if you want to feel better, you know, maybe, maybe you don't feel great about yourself. If you want to feel better, work hard at something. Whether you win or lose at that thing, there's an inner satisfaction that comes from putting in the work, from playing the long game, that understanding, hey, this is a long process. I've got to put in the work now for something that's going to come later. And with all of these little wins, you know, the f finding food, finding shelter, finding fire, and all of these losses, the mosquitoes, uh, you remember me talking about the mosquitoes last week, so grody, the, mos the mosquitoes, the animals that are out there, the loneliness, out of all these wins and losses, he had to keep hoping. Quote, there was a quote in the book that said, he had to keep hoping. Belief is everything, my friends, don't Stop believing. You probably don't know that reference, but it is a great song by Journey. Don't stop believing. We'll leave you with that. This has been Amex Kids 2 again. Please listen to last week's episode. Please commit yourself to reading. Please go out and purchase the book Hatchet. You can get this book at charliespanner.com slash reading list. Learn, learn, learn. Remember that learning will get you what you want. And one of my favorite ways to learn is to read. So use these episodes to, to, to grow this summer. Use these episodes to, 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 to go back to school in September with a positive mindset and with a, a gusto, with a zeal. Google those words, gusto and zeal, to keep on learning. You, my friends, are becoming the world's toughest little learners. Be bold. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Don't stop believing. 
hold on to that feeling. Ah, uh, X kids too. Hatchet too. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, I gotta do some things. And then, uh, and then I, got, I have a workshop at 145. And then uh, that's that, my friends. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please pass this on. Swivey, I hope you use this. I hope you can use this with your students. Uh, parents, please pass it on. Share this video. Tag your friends and your friends' kids. And get this into the, uh, the ears and eyes of uh, as many young people as you possibly can. Like I said, it's, it's middle school gauged. But, uh, you know, I speak to middle school and I speak to high school and I speak to elementary. So it's it's... You know, it's it's different at every level, but the principles are universal. So I sincerely appreciate it. Have yourselves a happy 4th. I'll be streaming live tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. That's that, my friends. Boom. Thanks for tuning in.